I'm Joey Tedesco, and you're watching the Cartoon Palooza Editorial. In case you're new to this, this is a segment of the show where I talk about trends and news going on in animation. Whether or not there will be direct answers to this, but more or less just an informal, open discussion regarding these sort of things. What I'll be discussing today is a controversial topic that does put people's panties in a bunch. It's whether or not hand-drawn animation is ever going to make a comeback on screens with the like of its computer animated counterparts. Now of course if I'm going to make an argument, I'm going to need a framework. I can't just make a long-winded rant that isn't grounded into something. I'm talking about whether or not a big studio like Disney, Warner Brothers, or DreamWorks would ever have the courage to distribute a film like this. Therefore, I'm not discounting the actual films that come out in Hart House theaters or foreign markets. I'm thinking about a Friday night at the local big chain theater. Will there ever be a chance that there will be a hand-drawn film? Are we good? Alright, now let's continue. The last time we seen Disney, the studio's standard to American animation release a hand-drawn feature was in 2011. That film was Winnie the Pooh. Afterwards, it was followed by computer animated films with a statement that there weren't any future plans to see these types of films again. This resulted in a lot of animators trained in the hand-drawn technique to lose their jobs. The big irony to all this is how a couple of years back at the making of Princess and the Frog, it seemed pretty promising that we'd see more hand-drawn features in the mainstream market. Even DreamWorks was considering releasing a film this year which combined hand-drawn animation with computer animation that was going to be directed by Mark Dindle of Emperor's New Groove fame. Now seeing that the film is not coming out this year, I gotta ask, what the hell? Some like to argue that it was Princess and the Frog's fault for not being the expected commercial hit it was set out to be, mainly because it did do well in the box office and received general critical praise. The big defining thing was that there was that other studio and its other movie that made more money and received more critical praise. Now I don't want to make it seem like one technique's better than the other, because they're not. You get good hand-drawn films just as much as you get good computer animated films, or vice versa. It's not the technique that makes a film better, but the story, characters, and themes that audiences can relate to. How it's put together is secondary or just as needed when the elements call for it. The problem comes when the people in charge compare and contrast what's popular to what works. It comes to no surprise that this happened because when looking at history of film, it almost happens all the time. For Disney, after The Lion King was released, the films that followed from their in-house animation unit were, on the grand scheme, fair at best, but never measured to the success of that film. Now don't get me wrong, I don't want this to be taken the wrong way. I like films like Tarzan, Emperor's New Groove, and Lilo and Stitch. I'm just saying, their success on a whole, along with the other films from that period, never measured up to films like The Lion King. It also contributed to this, where Pixar was getting their footing with the success of movies like Toy Story and Monsters, Inc. I often joke that they may as well call the Academy Award for Best Animated Film the best Pixar movie. Other than Spirited Away and Wallace and Gromit, the winners have either been Pixar movies, or to the general moviegoer, who isn't a cartoon dork like myself, assume the other movies to be like Pixar movies. Computer animated family films. Just think about it. That year when Michael Eisner was preoccupied with Roseanne Barr as a talking cow, we had one of the best superhero movies come out, and it was a computer animated movie. Incredibles was fascinating in that unlike the other animated movies, it had stakes where characters you get attached to could die, and it utilized camera work that was just as good as a live-action Marvel movie. And it wasn't just because it was computer animated. It was just focused on a great story with stakes, character development, and themes that made it just like Watchmen. You know, better than the actual Watchmen movie. But for most movie studios, it wasn't the fact that Pixar was making good stories with great characters, tone, and mood. It was because it was computer animated. Therefore, The Incredibles seemed like the movie to break the camel's back for the industry. Like mentioned before, mediocre studios will look at what's popular rather than focusing on making a good story. After 2004, it was a rarity to even see a hand-drawn film. I remember in 2006 when Curious George came out and I saw a hand-drawn film, it was like, whoa, where, where, where did this come from? It's even affected Disney with that mentality. Right after Home on the Range, it convinced them to go computer animation all the way. It came to no surprise that with the making of Chicken Little, most of these animators tried to turn a rock into a boulder. 
It was a weak story worked on by animators who didn't have that much training in this technology. When we started this movie, a lot of the artists, they weren't really computer savvy art film. Studios like Blue Sky, Pixar, and PDI worked with animators who are accustomed to that technology. At Disney, they were developing new technology to do simple things that could be done in traditional animation, but came across as too experimental and lacked appeal. Hence why it's also not surprising that computer animated films followed when Lasseter became the head of animation at Disney, would get additional help from Pixar animators. Something of which was included in Ed Catmull's part autobiography, Creativity Inc. Therefore, it came to no surprise that over time, computer animators were figuring out ways to incorporate cartoonier appeal that harkened back to cartoons more traditionally. But even then, it has its distractors. Now, as much as I disagree with Animat, I do think he has a point. Which is, if a film has a 2D aesthetic, why not just go for it to be hand-drawn? Again, I think Sony Pictures Animation and The Book of Life found a good medium between that. So on a grand scheme, you'd probably save more by using software like Toon Boom to make a quality studio piece for theaters. Or at least that's what Princess and the Frog did and it worked out fine. The same thing happened when watching Peabody and Sherman. It was an okay movie, but in the back of my mind, when looking at the overall aesthetic that had these grand backgrounds and minute details and fires and effects, is it really necessary for this story? Now I also wanted to bunk a myth that the studio resort to make a computer animated film because it's faster to produce, or just cheaper. I just think that's a subjective taste, whereas, oh, it just looks cheap, therefore it's cheaply made. I'm just gonna go out of a limb and say that, for Disney, the most expensive animated film they've ever made was not Snow White, it was not Fantasia, it was Tangled. Mostly dealing with the technology of animating Rapunzel's hair, when you watch that movie, I could safely say that it's not a cheap looking movie four years since it came out. Interesting enough, the filmmakers wanted to make the film seem like a traditionally animated movie, going as far as having 2D animator Glenn Keane direct the movie. He dropped down to supervising animator, but his work still shows in the character design and motions that are commonplace for traditional animation to pull off. But unlike Chicken Little, where the animators jump straight for the deep end when realizing they can't swim, it was something that developed over time with additional work with people who are trained in that medium. When it comes down to personal taste, this is why the topic is so heated. For a lot of animators who grew up watching Disney movies, this was a style that cemented itself as the overall aesthetic. Even the films in the Disney Renaissance has its root in the older films like Snow White or Bambi. While I feel their change from traditional animation to computer was a gradual one, for some, it seemed like they were abandoning the style that's been their look for 70 plus years. I'm just hoping we can reach a market that has variety in animation styles. Much like my first editorial where I feel that the realistic animation style, along with the same family friendly stories, makes the market seem too similar. I like that a studio like Laker House or Aardman are producing the occasional stop motion movie to throw into the mix along with the other big name studios. So why can't we do the same for hand drawn animation? Now this is where I'm going to describe why I love this medium so much. Whereas it isn't that change old, oh Disney did it this way, therefore it's the only way to do it, and I hate change argument. It's more or less it appeals to me as an artist, and it's my medium of choice. For me, a roof on my head, food to eat, and a pen and paper to draw on is a perfect life. Seeing drawings like that go into motion has such a visual appeal to me, even when I'm just watching a person draw or paint. One of my favorite scenes in Titanic isn't the generic I'm king of the world scene or that moment where the dude cartwheels to his death. It's the scene where Jack is drawing Rose on the couch. When I first saw that scene, seeing an artist take a pencil and transfer his love and passion through strokes of a pencil, it taps into this deep place of affection. It's probably why the pencil test part of making a hand-drawn film is just as exhilarating to see, if not better, than the actual movie. So to me, it's a personal defeat when we can't have more movies like that that utilize this technique. Which is to say that there isn't any artistry in computer animation. However, if I hadn't made a choice on how I'd like to tell a story, chances are it would be through sequential drawing. So whether or not we'll see a hand-drawn feature make it to the mainstream is still up for grabs. Comment and let me know what you think. Now I know through crowdsourcing there's an interesting project called Hullabaloo, which hopes to have this rally cry of saving 2D animation. I think it's a nice project to check out, and as far as I know it's raised four times its intended budget. Now I'm Joey Tedesco, 
and thanks for watching this editorial on the Cartoon Palooza. Now I don't want to make it seem like one technique is better than the other, because there are just as many good computer animated films just as much as there are bad hand-drawn films, or vice versa.